Uh, this is Clayton Skinner. Hi, I'm Clayton Skinner. My name is Clayton Skinner. My name is Clayton Skinner. Welcome back to Beyond the Beat. Welcome back to Beyond the Beat. Welcome to Beyond the Beat. Hello, everyone. My name is Clayton Skinner. Welcome back to Beyond the Beat. In this lesson, we're going to be going over linear patterns, specifically eighth note linear patterns. So this lesson will be called Linear Eighths. So, okay, so what is a linear pattern? What does it mean to play linearly? Um, what it means is, if you're playing a fill or a groove, it doesn't really matter, or you could do both. What it means is that when you're playing the pattern, no two limbs will ever play at the same time. So that means that if you're gonna play your ride, your ride has to be by itself. You can't accompany it with a bass drum. You can't accompany it with a snare drum. Everything has to be played off of itself. So you're never playing two limbs at the same time. And that's basically the, the gist of it. Um, there's so many different ways that you can do this, and you probably already do this already when you're playing. So anyway, we're going to start off today with eighth notes, and I'm going to give you more explanation in a minute. So let's get started. So what you just saw there was, I guess in my opinion, probably the easiest and most common linear pattern that can be played. Um, it was just simple eighth note pattern. If, if you play a lot of funk music, even maybe even disco music, you'll have come across something similar to that. Um, that's basically exercise one, written out, or actually played as a beat. All the exercises that are going to be on this PDF or in this lesson will be noted as the hands will always be playing on the snare, so if you look at the PDF, the hands will always be playing on the snare, and the bass drum will be playing whenever the bass drum plays. So number one, the bass drum plays on one and three, and the hands will play on the snare uh, on the and two and, and then the and four and. So if you were to look at it, and I've actually written a sticking out underneath it, so it'll be like bass, right, left, right, bass, right, left, right. So if you learn that on the snare and then move it over to the hi-hat, that's pretty much exactly what I just gave you the demonstration for. So um, it's best to try to learn the pattern before you try and uh, screw around with it. Now, you'll notice, like, obviously, there's no, like, rule saying that you have to play every one of these patterns, or every linear pattern has to follow a specific rhythm. So, like, or eighth note, sixteenth note, triplet. But in the learning process, it actually helps. So there will be lessons involving 16th notes, and there will be lessons involving uh, triplets, sextuplets, 32nd notes. So it'll, be a, it'll all be available to you. So anyway, here is exercise one, play just on the snare drum, and then work on just kind of moving it around. Take your time with it, make sure you use a metronome. So exercise two has the bass drum on one, the end of two, three, and then the end of four. So your hands will be playing on uh, and two, and then and four. So this beat kind of mirrors the, the eighth note pattern that we, we, we've played a while ago, or in one of my other videos, where it's like one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two. So this actually has a groove kind of feel to it, if you play it like that. Now, when you're working on moving your hands around, try to focus on, number one, learn it on the snare first. Then try to focus on playing your hands on two different drums that sound differently. So for instance, you could play it on, oh, no, it's not a drum, I know it isn't, the hi-hat, you could play your right hand on the hi-hat, left hand on the snare, you could play your right hand on a tom. Try to move it around, pick two drums that sound differently and play the pattern. Because sometimes when you're actually learning how to improvise stuff around the kit, the different sounding drums can actually throw you off. So uh, take that into mind. And you also, you don't have to follow the sticking pattern that I put underneath it. You can actually improvise whatever you want. If you want to play um, left, right, or right, left, it doesn't really matter. If you want to go right, right, sorry, that would be left, left, and then right, right, be my guest. You can do whatever you want. Uh, so, you know. Try to mix it up as many different ways as you can. So here's an example of number two, played all over.
Okay, so exercise three. The bass drum will be on one and, and then it'll be on three, and then four. So obviously everything else will be played with the hands. You'll have two and, and then three and, four and. Now it doesn't matter, again, it doesn't matter what you play the sticking wise. You can do whatever you want. What I have written out is just something to be used as an example. Um, I actually would suggest for all the, all the lessons on this page that have a singular snare drum hit, that you actually practice hitting it with a different sticking combination. Keep the hands that are playing, when they're playing together, or like when you're playing like a, a multiple set of hands, keep them the proper sticking pattern, but then improvise the singles when you're playing the one hand by yourself. Just something to think about. Uh, here we go. So exercise four may not actually sound very good if you were to use it as a beat. Uh, it might sound good as a fill. Anyway, you're going to be playing the bass drums on all the ands. One and, two and, three and, four and. Obviously your hands are going to be playing on the ones, twos, threes and fours. So it's just a simple matter of alternating between your whatever hand you're playing and your bass drum. Now. This was one of those ones where you can actually either A, use it as an exercise and move your hand around, move your hand around. You could take, play whatever pattern you want. I have it written out just right, left, right, left. You could do whatever you want. So just kind of get used to it. This is a good one to use with a metronome because it'll, it'll give you lots of, uh, lots of control using both of your limbs. But anyway. Five is the opposite of four. This one will sound good as a beat. Um, or fill, it doesn't really matter. But uh, the bass drum is going to be on one, two, three, and four, and your hands will be playing on all the ands. So it's just a matter of simply alternating. This one will actually sound like a beat. Um, but again, because you're always playing your, uh, preferably a tom, you may not get that same feel of without the cymbal. But anyway, doesn't matter, I don't even know why I said that. Just listen to my demonstration and then just kind of play around with it whatever way you can. So number six, we're going to be putting the bass drum on two and, and then the and of three. So your hands will be playing on one and, three, four and. I don't know, just try it out, try playing around with it, use it as a fill. Check out my demonstration. So obviously, use a metronome. Uh, another thing that can actually help you, especially when you're playing stuff like this, because your rhythms have to be perfect, uh, you're actually playing like eighth notes, and eighth notes are very like spaced out. And this works for every rhythm as well, not just eighth notes, but try to find a way to record yourself and play. Now you don't necessarily have to hear the metronome, but if you play to the metronome, then that's fine. But try to find a way to record yourself and play so that you can look at yourself and you can kind of rate what's going on. 
um, rate like how each each limb is hitting. If something's hitting too loud, make sure that they're all hitting the same volume. Unless you're actually wanting to do an accent, make sure that you're in control because that, that's the whole point of all this. Uh, linear grooves or linear patterns or linear grooves are actually very good for developing your your control and your timing, and you can develop a lot of speed out of these two. These are really good exercises. So uh, I hope you liked the episode. Uh, I gotta go now. If you want to get a hold of me, you can get a hold of me through the contact section at ClaytonSkinner.com. You can get a hold of me right here on YouTube. You can get a hold of me at Facebook.com slash ClaytonSkinner.com. Uh, or you can go to Twitter and it's Twitter.com slash ClaytonSkinner. So if you want to get a hold of me, there's lots of different ways of getting a hold of me. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Goodbye.